So this kind of stuff happens all the time. It's just such an organic process. And this is what I think is so hard for DIYers to do. This only comes with the experience of being a certified aquascape contractor and building lots of ponds. We got to the point where we've got the whole pond marked out and we're about to start placing our filters. So originally we said the skimmer box was gonna sit here and we wanted that waterfall to sit back in here. But if I do that, water is gonna drop like this and then go this way. And then half of my pond is not gonna be circulated right. Now we can fix that with jet and power heads and all these other things. But an easier way to do it would be move that waterfall to here, go this way. The topography of this yard slopes like this anyways, so it'll be effortless to get another drop coming back in. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Hey, welcome everybody. It's Brian with Team Aquascape. We're out here in sunny Jacksonville, Florida. It's sunny, but it's not Florida weather by <laughs> any means, right? No. I think this morning they said something like 30 degrees or something, but it'll warm up to like a balmy 45. Something right? like that, like something yeah. Like, yeah. Which is ideal weather for us Chicago boys. We love working in that temperature. Today we're gonna be installing an Aquascape Ecosystem Paradise Pond Kit. I'm sitting here with John and Rhonda. Tell me a little bit about this. Like, So you guys have been thinking of having a pond for how many years? So it probably was around 2019 when I first became really interested in having some kind of aquascape feature in our backyard. Awesome. And you're just supportive? I'm supportive, but <laughs> my neighbor has a great pond and ever since he's gotten his, I've wanted one too. Well, I will tell you this. I can always tell a person that wants a pond a lot by their landscape and you guys have an unbelievable landscape. Even when I pulled up in the front yard, I was like, wow, they love their yards. And people that love their yards definitely want a water feature. I can also see that you're really into birds. I see the bird feeders back mm -hmm. here. Yes. Yeah. The one thing I know about this pond is how much the birds are going to love it. Yeah. And I think we're going to try to do something maybe a little special for John and Rhonda to make it a bird loving pond. The one thing I love so much about this pond kit is that it's going to fit to scale with your yard. I haven't seen your neighbors yet, but I'm guessing it's big. It is. Right? It it's is a big. larger one. Yes. Sometimes a giant <laughs> pond doesn't mean it's a better pond. You have a nice, like, quaint backyard. It's very vacation y. If that's a word, vacation y, and it is now. <laughs> but with the canopies of the trees, with the backdrop of the plants over here, it feels very intimate. And so creating a giant pond would feel completely out of scale here. So, what I want to do with you guys is really, really make sure you're surprised at the end. Okay. I know it's hard to picture, and for everybody, it's hard to picture and I think that's why it's so difficult for people to imagine sometimes smaller ponds in their backyard especially when everything we do on YouTube is big and bigger and biggest and that kind of stuff so I want to give you a pond that fits to scale is bird loving and then of course still visible from inside the house so on days when it's 30 degrees in Florida you can still enjoy <laughs> it from inside Great. all right Great. thank you Brian. you excited thank you yes. all right yes. Yes. Well, you guys go hide inside go buy some plants go buy some furniture maybe a car or something and, <laughs> and <laughs> Great. And we'll come dig a hole over here and see what we can't build. Great. All right? Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. here in Florida again, right? Mm -hmm. But this time we're doing something special. We're gonna build an Aquascape 8x11 ecosystem Paradise. Paradise pond kit. Step one, figure out the location, right? And so both of us instantly, we come into the backyard, and this is before Rhonda and her husband John even came out here. Both of us start looking inside the house over here, trying to line up the sight lines from inside the house to where we want to put it out here. And in this backyard, there's a lot of options. I think it would look incredible underneath this tree, right? The canopy of the tree, that huge canopy makes it feel super intimate. But from my understanding, this tree not only drops a lot of leaves, drops a lot of fruit, drops a lot of flowers, it might be a maintenance nightmare underneath there. Yeah. Also hard to make that visible with the waterfalls facing back towards the house because of a septic tank and some other yeah. front challenges over in there. We'd love to put it right in the center, but in my opinion, sometimes right in the center feels way too man-made. So we've kind of chosen off-centered, more off-centered because 
I noticed one thing. As soon as I looked inside the house, there's these two lazy boy chairs, and one of them had reading glasses and a magazine sitting right there, which means they're used all the time. Yeah. So if we can line that up with this, I think we're good. Come inside and I'll show you guys what we're talking about. the two chairs I saw. If we can make it visible from these two chairs, I think we've got it. Yeah. So why don't we do this? Chris, why don't you run out, pretend you're the waterfall, and I'll and I'll tell you if I can see you or not. This is where we get to do the dancey waterfall fingers, right? The key idea is, as you guys saw, Brian is inside the house, sitting right in front of those two Lazy Boy recliners. And the idea is, we can design these water features from inside the house first. Even down here in sunny Jacksonville, Florida, there's can't enjoy this 100% of the time outside. So we always wanna make sure that we can give them that enjoyment from inside the house first. Yeah. So as I'm sitting there, it's really important to actually sit in the chair because if you're just standing, that's not how they're gonna be visualizing the whole thing. And what I noticed is this was obstructing the view a little bit and this is obstructing the view a little bit. By moving that thing just a foot and a half to the right, when sitting in that chair, it lined right up with that crepe mark. There, perfect. Nice waterfall, Chris. All right, now let's lay out this eight by 11 foot pond and we can start digging. So we got the whole area laid out. The next step is to mark this out. So we've got an eight by 11 ecosystem paradise pond kit. Now this is our number one pond kit, whether you're a DIYer or a contractor. And I think for this area, it's perfect. And that's not that I think, I know it's perfect because it's to scale with this space. Like I said with John and Rhonda, anything bigger would feel weird. So what I wanna do is take some of my dimensions. So I'm gonna come over to one side, make a mark. I don't want that pond coming any further than this area. And with a 12 inch shoe and or a tape measure, you can walk off 11 feet. So I come over to here, make another mark. Then I wanna walk off eight feet from this side. So the one thing I wanna do in this area is bring that pond right up to the patio. More importantly, because this patio is sitting a good foot higher than this area, in my mind, we're gonna take one of these big giant flat rocks that I saw, bring it right up into here. So Rhonda or John could sit here, put their feet on one of these destination boulders, and then our water be right down in there. This will be our fish feeding rock. So I'm gonna come right up into this area, Walk off eight feet this way. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Put a mark over here. And now what I've created is four spots that create a rectangle. As long as I leave all of my marks inside that invisible rectangle, I know my liner is gonna be big enough. The second I try to bring a curve outside of this area here, I'm gonna have trouble with my liner. So now I'm gonna step back, kind of visualize the pond I wanna create, and then we'll start digging this thing. So this kind of stuff happens all the time. It's just such an organic process. And this is what I think is so hard for DIYers to do. This only comes with the experience of being a certified aquascape contractor and building lots of ponds. We're constantly thinking of what's gonna be not just best aesthetically, but how is this system gonna function the best? We got to the point where we've got the whole pond marked out and we're about to start placing our filters. So originally we said the skimmer box was gonna sit here and we wanted that waterfall to sit back in here. But if I do that, water's gonna drop like this and then go this way and then half of my pond is not going to be circulated right now we can fix that with jets and power heads and all these other things but an easier way to do it would be move that waterfall to here i made sure it still lines up with john and Rhonda's chairs inside i want to drop that waterfall here go this way the topography of this yard slopes like this anyways so it'll be effortless to get another drop coming back in and then one thing john and Rhonda told us was we talked to them earlier was how much they enjoyed the birds and so in this area we're gonna do a little bird loving beach over here so not only can they see the waterfall from inside the house but they can also see those birds bathing in the bird loving beach spot So we've got 
got our first area excavated and all this soil gets thrown up around that biofalls and then buries our pipe. And so one of the things I really wanted to stress to you guys is how important it is not just to keep the pond to scale with the area, but keep your waterfalls to scale with the area. When we first started setting this thing and there was no soil around it, it felt very tiny. I'm trying to think of a fancy word for tiny, but that's it. <laughs> it felt tiny. Why do in two syllables or in five yeah. syllables what you could do in two? Do it in two. <laughs> <laughs> it fell on proportion. Everybody sees it sitting on the ground. They want to raise that thing up higher and higher and higher. And you don't understand that this actually gets bigger feeling as the berm gets out there. This feels three times higher once that berm gets out here. As we start dropping bigger boulders in here, creating a pool in this area, it's going to feel so much bigger. So keep the height of your waterfall to scale with everything. It's not that you can't build this up to here. And it's not that three foot waterfalls don't look great. The problem with three foot high waterfalls is if I come up this high, I need that much more soil. And as a DIYer, this is a mistake that people make all the time. They set the waterfall super high and then their soil does this. And now you have this volcano splewing water out of the top or an anthill with water coming out of the top and it looks ridiculous. Soil all the way up to here, out flat two to three feet and then slowly tapered away. And then we landscape all of this space. We're right into it. We've dug out the shape of our pond. Things are of course gonna change a little bit as we do rock. Now we're gonna mark out our next deep spot here. For me, I know this is the main viewing area right here. I really wanna encourage those fish to come right up into here. I also know we're gonna take one of those big flat rocks and kind of carve it into this space. And I want that thing to hang over kind of a deep spot over in here. With that said, let's mark out this deep spot. So I'm leaving this shelf right in front of my waterfall. The reason I'm doing that is I know when I'm building my waterfalls, I like to do a frame rock on either side. If I took it deep in front of my waterfall, now I have to start stacking rocks from 18 inches to two feet to three feet down below water level before I get all the way up into my frame rocks. This little shelf will make it 10,000 times easier. So I leave that and then the rest of it's up to you. Just keep in mind the size of the boulders you're using. You don't wanna do something where this deep area would come like that because by the time I put a boulder here and put a boulder here, I'm only left with 12 inches of water in between those two rocks. I really want to make sure I've compensated for this, the width of my boulder. So this sugar sand definitely makes digging conditions very, very easy and quick. Plus when you have other guys that know what the hell they're doing, it goes really, really smooth. So we're almost done with excavation. Brian's carving out the area for that beach that we talked about earlier in the video. Next step is gonna be fabric liner and then we're gonna get into the fun stuff, which is rocking and rolling. You see the boys from Earthworks over here shaving out this little spot. We've got this destination boulder we want to put in here. Kind of a footrest as you sit off the patio there. It's getting our beach set up over here. So we're going to start sloping that because it'll give us an idea where I want to set some of my big character boulders. A lot of times right off of a beach, I want to put a big character boulder right here and slope that gravel up. So this just kind of gives marks out that area. So there's no question on where those bigger rocks should go. You're still going to see us though constantly folding that liner back and forth because we want everything to fit in here just right and I think that's the difference between having it professionally built or doing a DIY this just comes from experience and experience and experience Just finished up digging, place the skimmer and biofalls, and next up's underlayment and liner. Let's go. Yeah. 
All right, we got the fabric and we got the liner and now we're getting to our rocks. And one of the things I wanted to talk about with the rock a little bit is find a rock you like and build every pond out of it. Here we've got an assortment of rocks, which is really important too. When I say assortment, it doesn't mean a variety of different types of boulders. It's all the same type of rock. This looks like a Tennessee field stone of sorts, but I've got some six to 12 inch. We come over here, there's some 12 to 18 inch size stuff. We look over here, we've got some nice, big, flat destination boulders. These these are those rocks we were talking about bringing like right up to the patio maybe I'll get one or two over by the beach and then these are my signature boulders these are not rocks that everybody's gonna be able to move by hand you might need a ball cart which is a tree dolly you might need a machine to set some of them in this rock right here I already know where it's gonna go I can tell where this rock down here is gonna go but these are the rocks I really look for those are the rocks that we're gonna use primarily in the pond especially that vertical wall that comes right up the side there now if you're a homeowner it doesn't mean you have have to use what we call machine size boulders in there it just takes on a different look when you can use some of these big rocks of course you can still make a pond look gorgeous using rock like this just focus more on the landscaping coming in over the edge to help soften up some of those joints we also got some cobbles in here we like to do some like washes here and there and then different types of gravel so you'll see all that come together as we start rocking this baby in first because I don't know if we'll get another one up here by the stream someplace but I love the idea of being able to sit on this patio actually think of this as more like a stair coming down to this level here we put our feet here fish can kind of come up and underneath this rock the cantilevers right out over our deep spot it's gonna be one of the coolest parts of this pond the other thing look at the size of the rock that we have that we're working with a lot of it's kind of the same size we're in this like 12 to 18 inch range this breaks up the monotony of the same size look we always talk about trying to get rid of that necklace look or that string of pearls. This thing does that. 